Hi there. Today I'm working with the Eloise kits from Scraptastic Club and these are the kits from April 2016. I already have my photo. It's a 4x6 vertical photo and I have backed it with white cardstock and two different pattern papers. Now I've just marked the edges of my photo mat with a pencil on my background because I'm going to be showing you a technique using one of the exclusive stencils from the kit and I want to remember where my photo mat is on the paper when I'm doing this stencil technique because I don't want to waste the time doing it if it's going to get covered by my photo. So the supplies I'm getting out are water-based ink pads these are just dye ink pads and you can use any kind of water-based ink. You can even use spray mist and spray it onto like a plastic surface and use that and a water pen. So really simple, um, really simple things that you probably already have on hand. And I'm also using watercolor paper just because it takes the water, um, the watercolor so much better than a normal piece of pattern paper that might warp. So I'm just speeding this up so you can see what I'm doing here. I'm just experimenting with different colors and I'm using colors that are from the pattern papers that I've chosen. So pink and yellow and um, red, teal. And so I'm just, I'm just putting my stencil down. I'm not adhering it down or anything. I'm just placing it down and gently adding the color in in the stencil. Now because the stencil isn't completely flat to the paper, like it's not stuck on, you're going to get a small amount of bleed and that's another reason why it's good to use watercolor paper because um, because you get a little bit of that bleed and it makes it look a bit a bit cooler. So you can see here when I take it up it's not, the lines aren't crisp and perfect. But you'll want to make sure that you clean off your stencil between every time you place it down so that you don't get smudges on your background paper. So there's my first diamond completed. And I've decided to add red into the mix because I didn't have that out before. So I've grabbed my red and I'm just going to decide where I want the next one to go. I'm going to do a total of five. So every time I figure out where to put one, I'm going to put my photo mat back down just to make sure that I like the placement. So for this one, I'm going to start with red. And you also want to make sure that you have a paper towel on hand to clean your water brush in between colors so that the colors don't get muddy. And I'm always using stamping up inks because I like the fact that you can press on them in the center and get the ink up on the top of the ink pad and use it almost like a palette. So I use them a lot for this sort of thing. I've also used my Stampin' Up! markers just on a large um, acrylic block and use that like, like a palette as well. So my third diamond is going towards the bottom of the layout. And I'm going to place a smaller diamond here at the bottom.
And then my last one is going to be here at the very top of my layout. So all of my inks and my water brush have been put away and next what I'm going to do is outline what I've just what I've just painted in with a thin navy blue marker and my paper has had some time to dry so it's fully dry you want to make sure that it is dry before you do this because you don't want your um, your marker line to run because you want this crisp clean line here. So I'm just trying to figure out if I want to to just do certain colors within the triangles so I'm just having a go at that first. But now I've decided to just do all of the triangles on each on each one of the diamonds because you still have that that watercolor kind of running outside of the lines but this navy blue really fine tip line gives it much more of a definition So for my title, I've decided to choose this Amy Tangerine Better Together sticker, but I want to give it some more definition and make it pop up off my page. So what I'm doing is just adhering it to the same watercolor paper that I use on my background so that it blends in, but I'm just cutting it out so I can pop it up with some dimensional adhesive. Okay, so the first part of my title is going to be Jumping Is, and I have this sheet of Bella Boulevard Alpha stickers, and they're completely white. So what I'm going to do is take my stamping pad again and um, a sponge dauber and just sponge the color onto the letters that I need for my title. So now I'm going to start adhering and embellishing. So I'm going to go ahead and start putting my title down. This is the Better Together sticker from the Amy Tangerine sticker sheet. And I'm going to go ahead and put that down with some dimensional adhesive. My alphas are now dry, so I can go ahead and get those put on as well. But before I do that, I want to put something next to my title and before I had had a flower but I didn't like the organic shapes with the kind of hard geometric shapes that I'm using um, on my background so what I'm doing is taking this Polaroid camera which is really cute and has kind of hard edges 
um, and I'm going to go ahead and adhere it to the same watercolor paper that I used for the Better Together sticker because I want to pop it off the page. So I like the way that looks and since I already have my journaling typed on my background paper I'm going to go ahead and start adhering everything down. So I'm just going to adhere my photo where I had the pencil marks from before. And before I put the Polaroid camera down, I'm going to get my title placed. So all of my alpha stickers that I had inked are dry. So what I'm going to do is grab my ruler and just kind of line them up on my clear ruler to be sure that my words fit in the space that I'm leaving here. This is something that I do pretty often, especially when I am adhering something onto a photo. I will put it onto my ruler first to make sure it looks right because I don't want to ruin the photo and have to reprint it. So that fits in really well. So I'm just going to put that to the side before I adhere it down. And I just pulled out my dimensional adhesive to adhere the Better Together in my title. And since my photo is already popped up, the top bit of my photo is just going to get regular adhesive. Okay, so my title's in place. I'm just going to put a few more pieces on the layout. This exclusive flare badge is is in the kits this month. It's really, really cute, and it matches the, the stencil on my background. So I'm going to just stick that in the bottom left-hand corner. I also put an exclusive sticker that says moments up in the top left hand corner. You can see that on the edge of my photo mat there. And I have a teal label from the um, label sheet that matches all of the kit colors. And those are in the digital files. If you're a subscriber, you get those every month with your kit. So I'm just adding the date onto that. And in the cherry pie stamp set this month, there are some hand-drawn stars. And I want to use those on my background as well just to add a little bit more embellishment. So I'm grabbing my navy blue stamp pad to bring some more of that navy blue into the layout. And I'm going to go with the small star.
So just a few more things I have for my kit here. I have some rub-ons from Better Together and puffy stickers. So I'm just going to see if I can incorporate any of these just to add a little bit more embellishment. I really love the gold geometric pattern on the rub-ons here and I think that could really look great on my green, my turquoise green journaling card there. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of cut just the amount that I need so I can use the other bit on another layout and rub that onto the top of my card. It just adds another place where those geometric shapes are going on my layout. And it also matches the gold in my title. So that's the final step of this layout. Be sure to check out the Scraptastic Club April Eloise kits. And if you liked this video and want to see more, please follow my feed and leave a comment letting me know what you'd like to see. Thanks so much and happy creating.